Cleveland Orchestra do their thing out at Blossom. They're going to be showing Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, out there on the big screen, and the Cleveland Orchestra performing the score live. They're going to do three performances, end of the month, 28th, 29th, and 30th. Tickets for the entire 2023 Blossom Music Festival are available at clevelandorchestra.com. All right? This is a four-pack of tickets for you and three pals. Lord of the Rings and the Cleveland Orchestra. End of the month. Good luck, Car 10, 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. One of life's most pressing questions. What do I like about Alan Cox? Finally answered. Um, all right, I don't like much about you. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7. Needed a reason to go to Indianapolis, and let's face it, nobody does. Uh, with our uh, due respect to our bureau chiefs out Indianapolis way, uh, but they're announcing uh, Farm Aid is going to be back in Indianapolis. I don't know if they did it last year. It was a long period of time where they didn't do Farm Aid. But if you're into bands like Melon Camp and Willie Nelson, Neil Young is going to be there too. Dave Matthews. Maybe Mary will be in Indianapolis that weekend. You're not you're not in Indianapolis the weekend of September 23rd by any chance, are you? No. Oh. September 23rd, I think I am in Cincinnati. So not Indianapolis. Not Indianapolis. Similar, but not Indianapolis. Is Cincinnati similar to Indianapolis? Hey, it's mm. a large city in the Midwest. Yeah, I mean, it's not that far <laughs> from me. They're only like three hours yeah. apart. Not even close. <laughs> They're as similar as There's a My Tai and a Pina Colada. <laughs> Margot Price, there? she's great. She'll play. What, Bill? I was just saying, what, when are you at where you're going to be? Go Bananas? Go Bananas in, in September, that weekend that he's talking about. I'm there like two weeks before that. Mm. Cincinnati, show up for Mary and Bill. Whoop, whoop. Like the 7th through 11th, I think. This will be outside Indianapolis. It is uh, Neil Young's first in-person farm aid since 2019. So they were, because all the COVID stuff, he wasn't out there doing stuff. So if you're into that kind of Neil Young jam band vibe, it should be a good show. The string cheese incident, anybody? They're going to play there too. <laughs> Willie Nelson is uh, doing his summertime tour. But um, Farm Aid was uh, in, in Indianapolis last, like 20-some years ago. But uh, if you're a fan of that kind of stuff, those tickets are going to go on sale uh, Saturday for Farm Aid. There'll be a pound cake sports break here momentarily. I'll also have uh, another $1,000 for you in about four or five minutes, uh, courtesy of the Buzzard Bookie. Alan, you should have taken Gwen's last name. Uh, well, yeah, no, I, um, I, I, it never occurred to me. I it never, um, you know, my, my, um, Ex-wife still uses my name. So is mine. Yeah, Does my man? my mother. She also talks to my family more than me. <laughs> <laughs> She's earned the squire name yeah, more than has, you have. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, you know, because it is a pain in the ass to change your name, and then it's a pain in the ass to change it back. I think my mom still has part of her marital name. I mean, Gwen's parents got divorced. 25 years ago, maybe? No, no, not 25 years ago. They'd been married for 25 years. Anyway, her mom kept her dad's name because she's like, uh, you know, whatever. It's fine. It's on everything, right? You cannot hyphenate a last name that is a color. 
It never sounds right, somebody said. Yeah, but I think Brown is such a common surname. It's more than just a color. I mean, there aren't a lot of people walking around. My name's Jim Yellow. You know, Brown might be like, or black, white. But if it was, um, you know, I don't know. Yeah, you can't, you can't put, in my particular case, my name would have to go last. You can't put the name and then you can't put Brown and then my boyfriend's last because name. Because you want the, the longer name in front of it. Yes. I see. So if the name was, like my last name was longer, like what's up? Cody Purple, <laughs> you know? Ooh, you should change your name to Cody Purple. That's a rad name. That's a great name. <laughs> By the way, if you do, Stephen Canton shot this idea my way, and I think it's dynamite, referring to something earlier in the show. If you do get your own gig in another market, you need to change your name to Chester Drawers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because that's great. Chester Drawers in the morning show? Mornings, you're cute. Um, listen, Chester Drawers is not a bad uh, way to do it. You know, you can, uh, you start clean. It's a clean slate. You can reinvent yourself. Your pound cake here, you can be anything elsewhere. They're not going to know pound cake. No. Nope. You can be Chester Drawers. It's weird. When, when I uh, look at my... Uh, insights on Instagram how I'll have like a fan in like Saudi Arabia <laughs> like or, or like I will have a fan in like Morocco and, and someone who looks at my post all the time I'm like wow well who? people people get suggested off of other things too you know? I, I just find that funny I'm like who's that one person in a little you know a country way down yonder and then they're a fan of me it's just cool dude you want to talk way down about... yonder do you know where Morocco is it's Africa. yonder what is it Morocco, <clears throat> Africa? It is Africa. Nor- north. Wait on. Don't tell me. Because it's by France. Um, so it's northwest Africa, right? Well, it's not by France, but you're right, yeah. Because I've, I've <coughs> the Moroccan theme or whatever, but yeah. Now, how did you arrive at that? Like, you I, you clearly had, like, a map in your head or something. Yeah, I look at a map it, in my it would be It would be closest to Portugal. I mean, But you're right. It's northwest because I, Africa. Because I, there's people that... <clears throat> There's certain countries in Africa that are very touristy, and it, it's a lot of influence on fashion or architecture, or mostly you know, the ones on the on the water. Yeah, or like furniture yeah. and stuff like that. And I I know people have this this room is Moroccan, so it's a very Moroccan theme. I'm like, okay. when this room's a Moroccan, don't come and knock. <laughs> like Nick Cannon's kid, Maroon or uh, Monroe and Monroc. Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, but I, but you are from you, your family's from Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. So, yeah. yeah. What, Mary? Uh, I was just gonna say because he was saying how weird it is to see followers and listeners from other parts of the country. Um, my Facebook's doing really well. I have one hundred eighteen thousand followers on Facebook, and most like one hundred eighteen thousand. Yeah, I had one hundred awesome. one hundred eighteen thousand. Only seventy one thousand are in America. Eight point four thousand are in India. Five point five thousand are in Pakistan. So I get. So what's going on there? I They're turned on by a no woman that can speak idea. freely. Dude, I'm not even joking. I, I, no, I they, like. They hate follow her for that. Yeah. No, because they're super supportive. Because I hit up my social media team and I was like, "What's going on? Are these all bots? Because like, if they're in India, I don't know if there's like a something placed there. I don't know what's going on. They're super supportive. They're like, "You go, girl. dude." They're in my well, because my dude. <laughs> I love what you do. My dude looked. My into dad it. is also dead. America doesn't know comedy. You should be a star. Yeah. My dude looked into it and he goes, based on like the people who have top fan badges. Those are the people who comment and share and engage with your posts. He goes, all of these are legit. He would say, I would, see, he said less than 5% of these, of my total followers are probably bots. He goes, probably around 2%. He goes, so but they no. should they should have a line on why that is. He said that there's just a lot of people there and it might be getting pushed through weird algorithms around India. <laughs> but my tops, my five top cities are in Pakistan, Bangladesh, Egypt, Pakistan, India, India. Those are my top cities where all my fans are. And I can't figure it out. But those are always... countries. Uh, I'm what? sorry. The... Do they say the cities? I can't say them. I don't want to get... For... What? Why? Karachi. Karachi, yeah. Is my top city. Out of all cities, not just in India. The city where I have the most followers on Facebook is Karachi, India. Did you hear well, that Karachi, K- Karachi is I'm sorry, like... Pakistan. Yeah, Karachi is the biggest city in Pakistan. So. Okay, so, yeah. okay. And then after that, it's Dhaka. Yeah. Bangladesh. Yeah. Cairo. 
Ooh. These La- are all huge cities. Yeah, so, yeah. Lahore, L A H O R E. Yep. Pakistan, Delhi, India, Kolkata, India. So you're big Kolkata. in Pakistan. Pakistan you're in and Karachi India. and Lahore. Those are the two biggest cities in Pakistan. I have between you those are... two, 2,200 followers between those two cities. <laughs> so at any point when you found this out, did you happen to Google Mary Santora, Pakistan? I have not, but I have more followers in India than I do in Pakistan. But, and then after that, it's like the only ones in, in America are New York, San Antonio, Chicago, LA, which means that the majority of my Facebook followers aren't from Cleveland. Maybe they think your dad died in 9 11. I don't think so. <laughs> well, you haven't really posted your dad, Joe. Like no, the, this the, is mostly crowd work. The crowd work and the uh, stepmom. And the special stuff. But well, yeah. it, Pakistan and Lahore, uh, or Lahore and uh, Karachi, because there's so many people, they have huge crowds. Well, there you go. Maybe that's why they like the crowd work. It just uh, it just struck me as strange. I reached out to my people. Old on Taliban the mayor over Dude, here I was is like, really killing it. I was like, "What's going on with this?" And they're like, "We don't know, but it's all legit." Because I was getting a lot of messages. You gonna go tour there? Well, but I, if like, they don't, but wait a second. If they this is what they do. If they don't know, how do they know it's legit? What do you mean? Ba- based on the interactions. So they're saying we don't know why. It's you're doing so well but they in can India tell and Pakistan, but they are not bots because I get probably 15 to 20 messages a day from brown men with poor grammar. <laughs> and well, you should figure out what and you How haven't many asked of them are Cody. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't asked any of them. Hey, how did you find me? Well, all, so a couple of my reels on Facebook, one has seven million, one has five million views like they're huge those are huge numbers for a comedy video to get. Have you spoken to any other comics about this? Uh, anybody else have similar? No, but I, I s- have some videos like that on YouTube, but YouTube doesn't have DMs. Mm. Like I, and I don't know, I haven't really looked into the breakdown of but a lot of mine's more American and like New York, LA. There is some, there is a significant amount of YouTube viewers from India. Uh, for me, but uh, I can't look at it the same way because uh, YouTube YouTube has different statistics. Well, because I asked my buddy Raj, who's a comic and who is from India, and I was like, "What is you got going a pipeline?" On? And I ke- I keep sending him like screenshots because it's not your traditional like women will joke about Indian men on the internet being like show bobs and vagin, and it's none of that. It's like you are so. Like you are so beautiful, amazing talent. Take rest. You're like <laughs> they're trying to be. Maybe they're trying to fix you up with their friend who's a Nigerian prince. No, it's more. It's more just like. Any of them ask you about investment opportunities? No, that you might be? Okay. it's them telling me how much they enjoy my videos, and I'm like, this is so strange. It's just such a random. I don't know. It makes no sense. To me. <laughs> you know who Mary is? Who's the guy that does the videos? Um, not Virdas. He's a comic. Um, who's the guy that does those super cheesy videos about people learning oh, a lesson? Oh, oh Dar- Darman. 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 You're Darman, Darman of comedy. You're Darmare. You're, you're Darmare. Darmare. Yeah. Uh, no, these people are just, they're really Girl supportive. gets her comeuppance after mm-hmm. being rude to waiter. Oh, I love it. Yeah, okay, I got to give away this money, and then we, Pound Cake, you got a sports break ready to go, yeah? Mm-hmm. All right. This is your chance to bet with the buzzard bookie and win $1,000 now. Enter this nationwide keyword at WMMS.com. Cash. That's cash. Enter it now at WMMS.com. Play ball! This is a Pound Cake Sports Break. And the headlines today is going to be a very violence-heavy sports break this week. Can't we all just get along? Apparently not. Zuckerberg is taking no prisoners. He is taking this match against Elon very seriously. He posted a picture to Instagram in the metaverse next to, next to his UFC trainers looking shredded. Nah, I ain't going to lie. Take the dweeby face out of it. If he was just a headless torso on Grinder, I might risk my safety hooking up with him in a car. Hell, even with the dweeby face. Y'all know how I got down back in the day. Just saying. Elon, you might be in trouble. First, Zuckerberg Zuckerberg steals your coding for Twitter to create threads. And now he has he's showing off his rockin' hot bod on Instagram to <laughs> rub it in your face. You better come with the heat, heat <laughs> Elon. Be prepared to throw hands, not just Twitter fingers. That's all I'm going to say. Also, is Britney bitch? Ow! 
<laughs> That's how I imagine the interaction went between Britney Spears and NBA player Victor Wimbanyama. Sure, <laughs> why not? Okay, yeah. Nailed it. Mm-hmm. In case you missed it, I'll fill you in. Britney Spears was in Las Vegas when a large entourage was walking in front of her. She gently tapped the fellow walking on the shoulder, and she received a smack across the face, a backhand even. And let's just say it didn't go over well. And more than that, people were saying that she deserved the smack in the face because the security thought that she was just some groupie trying to grab him. Well, here's a clip of her addressing it. Here, let me show this on the live stream. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for those of you watching on YouTube. Yep, there we go. They're like, whoa, that's Britney Spears. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. she went on talking about, like, no girl deserves to be hit. Yada, yada, yada. Of course we don't. We don't believe that Britney Spears By the hit. way, where she was right there, this place catch, just outside that frame is where we had dinner on our last night in Vegas. Mm. A place called Julian Serrano Tapas. It's over in the Aria. It was right next to catch and then Cathedral right next to it. There was no... No crime scene tape there. I didn't see any. <laughs> there, nothing was cordoned off when we were there. Oh, I think man. this. I think this literally happened like, at, like the night after we had had dinner there. Something. But when I saw that video, I was like, "Hey, we were just a table away." Yep. Well, she said she hasn't received a public apology yet, but she's waiting on it because he apologized to her privately at a table when she was at her table like 30 minutes later. So I don't like this at all. Britney is upset. Britney's fans are upset. Victor is upset, and he's probably going to have to fire his head of security. This whole situation is just toxic. (laughs) I know. I had to throw it in somewhere. And lastly, this is changing the definition of taking it to the head. I don't know why they have kids on the field during a home run derby. You're just asking for trouble, if you ask me. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. hit a line drive and left a young boy seeing stars. It was pretty intense, and I think we have a clip of that, too. Yep, let me load it up. Here we go. Okay. When they asked him, Vlad said, of course he said yes. They were in combination in 19. <laughs> Dude just falls out. Ugh. Oh, poor kid. Poor kid. Oh, poor kid. But I do have good news. The boy's parents said he will be okay, even though they wrapped his head up like Frankenstein. He lives to tell the tale. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes this Pound Cake Sports Break. Play ball! Um, this is a Pound Cake Sports Break! I know what you're going to do. What do you mean <laughs> by wrapping the head up like Frankenstein? I, I thought when, it, well, I saw the Twitter thread. I thought when he said uh, not Frankenstein, him, I thought when like he comes alive and he had to take the wrapping off, didn't he have like little screws in his head? Is that well, not- yeah, he's got screws in his head, but like I don't. I when I oh, I, I was gonna go even nerdier than that. Okay, go. You please. mean. Frankenstein's, Frankenstein's monster. monster. <laughs> <laughs> Frankenstein was the doctor. Bill thought you were talking about the mummy, but you're talking about like young Frankenstein where they undo his head. He's got the bolts in his neck, and because yeah, that- they because they had to saw his head to get the brain out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I thought he was just like wrapped, like he had. I don't. What do they call it? Mumps or whatever. <laughs> what? And now we've found ourselves in an even better territory. Okay. That's why we what? ask questions. That's yeah, that's right. Yes. Yep. Because we're gonna we're, we're gonna hit oil. Frankenstein's monsters. We're gonna mumps. hit oil. What um mumps? Mumps is not a thing. No, it is. It, what are you talking about in I, relation to Frankenstein? I, when I was a kid, there was a cartoon, and one of the guys had mumps, and they wrapped his head like oh, wrapped. His ears and it was just like okay, little... like old timey, right? Because it was. Uh, I see what you mean. Yeah, that's what I. Because it's like a glandular thing, and so they okay. would wrap. Yeah, I've never had mumps, so I don't know if that's like a thing or not. That's but... like old timey, like Abbott and Costello. They may have a toothache, and they'd wrap their head. We're like, oh, I gotta go to the dentist. That's what I get from using slang from uh, slang from Twitter because it was in someone's Twitter. They they Frankenstein him. I say, like, oh, that's the thing. Because I. The what dude... do you listen to the dummies on Twitter for? Well, that was in the thread. I saw it. I was like, yeah, that's funny. But the guy. So what? Did... You're just taking other people's material? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. He's not even on Threads, Bill. Are you on Threads? I'm on Threads. At I'm Bill on Squire. Threads. You're not on Threads. At Bill Squire. At Alan Cox. Listen, Pound Cake knows his Mary Shelley. Don't ever come at him over his uh, love of Frankenstein, the monster, the doctor, the modern Prometheus. The mumps. The mumps. The mumpsters. I, I remember that. That was years. I know what you're talking about, but I don't. 
Frankenstein didn't have the mumps. Oh, by the way, I'm mm, fire and mumps bad. <laughs> I'm like four thousand views from pure BS hitting a hundred thousand. Oh, good Thank you. for you. Thanks. All together? No. Okay. <laughs> we do it in shift. Oh, yeah, there we go. We do it in shift. There's Mary's support. Uh huh. Cool. I gotta take a break. If uh, you want to send a text in three five one nine two, you'll see all the pictures.